Glam. We're live. Hello, welcome to Stepford for another cooking day. I thought I'd have a signature entrance from now on. Today it's the stairs. I might change it by next week. So I hope you're all viewing with us today because we're going to do cookies. Um, have we got anybody online yet or not? Nobody there yet? Not a soul. Not one person. Oh, we need you to be there, really. We'll go through to the kitchen. So come on, let's go this way. We'll go through the house. As you can see, we decorated for the fall. We'll tell you about that later on because I did a little video that was on YouTube. And while I've got you, subscribe to the YouTube channel, please. Mm. I need you, as many of you, to join the YouTube channel. Click the link on my page and then click subscribe and then you'll see other videos as well that won't be available on Facebook. So come on, let's go through to the kitchen. And we're here in my half-finished kitchen. Because, unfortunately, we didn't get time to have the kitchen completely finished by today. Really should have started it tomorrow, but we didn't. So this I'm going to make cookies. And um, one of my favourite sayings is, there is a howling void in the cookie jar. And when it's empty like that, mm -mm, no, no. Especially in this house. Stand store-bought um, cookies in any way whatsoever. Because they're that full of chemicals and, and rubbish. It's just, they're just vile. Um, I want to explain... Oh. <laughs> Cookies and biscuits are two entirely different things. A cookie is a slightly softer bake than a, a, a biscuit that you have in the UK. So I don't make biscuits. I only ever make cookies. I'm going to do two different ones today. So what I've done is, to save time, like every good television show, I've weighed everything out. We're going to make um, a coconut cookie, um, which today, I mean, you can bake along with me, but it's can't be exactly in real time which you'll realize as we're going through the motions of it um, but i'm going to bake every single thing with you and show you but I've, I've had to bake a few pre beforehand to show you exactly what we do so we're going to start with the coconut ones you're going to need a mixer if you've not got a big mixer this is one of my kenwood and i've just knocked the uh, i've just knocked the splash guard off this is one of my Kenwoods. I have three of these. Um, I don't like um, the, the new modern big mixers. These are all like 25, 30 years old, if not more. Um, this one's about 1972. So, Mary Lowe said, Mary, Mary Lowe said hi. Hi Mary. Hello darling. Hope you're feeling a lot better. So we're going to start with this. I will need to put my glasses on because I'm going to preset your oven. Um, fan oven again. Um, if you're not fan, Make sure you Google it because it's a slightly different temperature, but we're at 170 on the oven, between 165 and 170. Um, and we're going to start with... Sue Davies said hi. Hi Sue. Hello darling. I need a spatula. Owen and Mimi said hello Auntie Terry. Hello Owen, hello Mimi. I hope you're going to cook these. Um, right, we need six ounces of <clears throat> butter at room temperature. Don't use the butter cold, because if it's cold it doesn't... Yeah, quite do it. Then you're going to need two ounces of sugar. Into the mix off. And then this is going to go on high. Now you're going to get noise now. So turn your mixer on full and you need to beat the, the cream and sugar together, the butter and sugar together, until it becomes sort of pale and white and fluffy. It doesn't take that long. So, halfway through, if my splash guard doesn't keep coming off, just give your bowl a little bit of a scrape down, like so. Sean Bird just said, loving the baking videos. Well, thanks, Sean. Uh, Richard from Raggles yeah. wants you to send them batch over. Send you a batch over, Richard. Yeah, you'll be having them on your menu. If anybody is ever up in um, that way, you must go to Raggles. They're a beautiful restaurant that my friend owns. Right, then we're going to go in with... I just dropped my thing to remind me. Six ounces of self-raising flour. Okay. Two ounces 
of I've put desiccated coconut on the list because it was easier for you to find. I don't use desiccated coconut. This is sweetened shredded coconut, uh, which in the UK is impossible to buy. You have to buy it online. I get this on, um, you can buy it off eBay, uh, Amazon. It's by Baker's. Uh, it's Baker's Sweet Shredded Coconut. And it's a more natural coconut. It's far moisty, so you can sort of stick it together and it goes like that. The English one is, is really hard, uh, but it works the same for purposes. So, in with that. Then we're going to need my little handy dandy rasper and we're going to put the little bit, not a lot, of the zest of a lemon about, about half. Anybody else joined us yet? There's quite a few people watching you, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of people watching me. Well, I like being watched. Changed my hair as well this week. Ever decided she wanted me to have it a bit more fluffish. So very flat last week, so I humoured her. So, in the mixer. And then back on. About medium speed, don't don't really beat it because once you start to beat the flour, it will sort of make them very tough and it won't be nice at all. Because this is a very, very soft dough. So we've got that together. Roxy tumble dryer. Oh my rock! Are you Terry? Love from your daughter Roxy. How are you, my darling? How's Northern Ireland? Do I must come over again? It's ages since I've been to Northern Ireland again. Uh, right, a little bit of flour on your countertop. Don't overflour. If you overflour, you will really toughen the biscuits. Uh, same when you do pastry. If you add lots and lots of flour, you're adding more flour to the the, the mixture. In other words, so. This is where you will see why we have made some earlier. Because this dough now, we have to chill. Let's just get that out of the way. And what we're going to do is bring your dough together. The dough, when it's like this, is, it's too soft to work with. It's a soft dough anyway. It really is a very soft dough and it's quite sticky and you need to get rid of the stickiness. So what we do is... Roxy said she hopes to see you soon. Yeah, yeah I she's, do well. she's loving it with her afternoon coffee. Oh, good girl, good girl. Right, get some surround wrap. Cling film. Oh, is that what they call it here? Piece of surround wrap. Cling film. Stop repeating that, it's a hideous word. Pat it into a little disc, and then that goes in the fridge for about 20 minutes. What we'll do is we'll put that one to one side, and then while you've got that one chilling, if you're going to do two cookies, because I do two different ones on the same day, obviously, don't start doing dozens of them, because if you do lots and lots of different ones, you're getting the right mess. So, we need uh, another mixer bowl and a beater, so we'll just get rid of that one. The Marvellous when you have multiples of everything. Now, I want the guard to go back on because I have a habit of slinging flour everywhere. So that will just balance like that when we get in. And we're going to do the same thing again. Slightly different this time though. You still six ounces of butter on this one. Two ounces of sugar again. Any questions, keep going with me. This, again, is going to have to be... ...mixed together until you get a light cookie. Once you've creamed the butter and sugar together, you can start getting used to knowing if it's at the right... ...at the right consistency. It should be fluffy, but not light and white. Right, now this is 
where this one is different because the other one are coconut. This one is on the lines of a shortbread. It's the easiest way I can explain what they like. They're very, very um, light. They, this is very crumbly. So in this one now, we go with eight ounces of plain flour. This one. This is two teaspoons of ground almonds. If you've got a nut allergy, which a friend of mine on Facebook said, oh, I can't make it because I've got a nut allergy, replace the two teaspoons of um, ground almonds with two teaspoons of corn flour, okay? Does exactly the same thing, it's just not got quite the bite. That goes in. Then you want to rest it out again. A little bit, the other half of, the lemon rind. Don't try not to get the pith, the white bit, because it'll make them very bitter. And um, you only want the zest. Okay. And again, if you're wondering where these are from, these are off eBay. Um, it's just called a kitchen rasp, and they are not a nutmeg rasp. Don't get that. It's too hard. Um, and there's my lemon gone. But I've got it anyway. So uh, they're on eBay and I think they're about pounds at the outside. I've got about six of them. Right, and then just to zest that up a little bit more, we're going to add some um, food flavouring. Uh, this is lemon and it's by Lovis, which I buy these on eBay. Um, it's a natural lemon flavouring. Um, you can use the fake one. I don't believe in all this rubbish. Um, when they say about things like good vanilla essence and all that cow cubs wallop. It's absolute rubbish. It's, as long as it tastes of vanilla, it tastes of vanilla. And the whole point is you're supposed to be saving money, not costing the earth to make things. These are about a pound a bottle. And if you buy them on eBay, if you buy something like six, you get two for free and things like that. So you can get lots and lots of different ones. I've got boxes of them. So Mini Diamond wants to know, like would it be the same if you was making chocolate ones? Yes. It, at that point where we just put the lemon in, don't put the lemon zest and don't put the um, thing in. Instead of the ground almonds, use two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Use a good cocoa powder though, in it, not um, like a cheapy one. Um, you know, get Cadbury's or something like that, which is a good one. But not drinking chocolate. Drinking chocolate is a totally different thing. But it, they're not quite as nice, this recipe, if you turn it into a chocolate cookie. It's not the same. I, I'll do chocolate cookies on another day. That's a totally different way of actually doing things. So we're going to bring them. How are you anyway, Min? I missed you when you were in London, didn't we? I would have loved to have seen you after the last time I saw you. The last time I saw you was at the JoJo's too. We just have to shout over the mix of the mushrooms while we get that to come together. Right? And your dough in this one will be a much drier dough. So if I show you at the moment, yeah? Sort of like that. And what you're going to do is little 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 tiny bit of milk okay you just want the dough to start grabbing together and that's it go over the once more you only want it to grab don't make it into to if it's in a ball inside the mixer you've gone too far and it's melted it. and then bring it together With your hands. Mimi says she's good, thanks. Mimi is? Yeah. Oh, good princess. <clears throat> right, so we'll just get rid of that bowl as well. And again, into a disc. Surround wrap. Cling film. Thank you for the correction again, my darling. God bless you for that, my darling. And then those go in the fridge, both for about 20 minutes or so, okay? So what we'll do is, I need to move this out of the way. 
And like in all good cookery shows, oh, it smells lovely in there because I've got a casserole in the slow cooker. Right, I've got two that I've pre-done earlier, okay? Because it needs to be chilled. If it's not chilled, you're just going to get in such a mess. And it really is a mess. It's all over your fingers, it's in your hair. I end up with it down my bra. My nipples are sticking together with it. You just really can't do it. So, a little bit of flour. So which one are you doing first? This is the, uh, oh, I've got to look. This is the, well, the second one that we've done, the shorter ones that I've got the lemon in them. It doesn't overly matter. Right, so, a little bit more flour. So is everybody following this so far or does anybody need to ask anything else? Everyone's just watching, there's no questions at the moment. There's no questions. Well, we will do a Q&A after. We've sort of finished. Rolling pin. Rolling pin. Um, this is my favourite rolling pin. Phil likes me to explain rolling pins. That's my fel friend Phil Lawrence. Um, this used to be my mum's when she was at school. Um, it did used to have two knobs. It's only got one knob now. So, you know, it's... But it does... And I love it. I absolutely love it. I always wanted to get my mitts on it. And then when um, mummy moved in to live with us... Um, I got it. So, right, we stuck it there slightly. Don't over roll, okay? And then just pat your edges. You don't want to overwork the dough. If you overwork the dough, it becomes quite tough. Cookie sheets, you know, just cheap metal cookie sheets lined with, grease pr uh, with uh, baking parchment, not grease proof, use baking parchment. Um, you can use the bit, somebody said to me it's a waste. You can use it again, if you look carefully on the camera, you can see where I have actually baked a previous set on it. The cookie sheets are donkey's years old. I don't believe in throwing them away. I don't wash them. If you wash them, they'll end up sticking. It becomes hideous. So don't. Just give them a cursory wipe over. Everything's lined anyway, right? Two sides of cookie cooker, cookie cooker, 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 I can't say it. Two sides of cookie cutter. Um, that one, I think, is too small. So I usually go for this one. It's about the size, that's about the size of a digestive. Yeah? Either way, I can actually take my glasses off now because I don't need them. Not reading things. Right, and into your dough. and lift with a palette knife. This is a palette knife, not a kitchen knife. You need a palette knife. All these things when everybody says, oh, I've not got that, it's gonna cost me a fortune to do it. No, it doesn't. You know, go to the Sue Ryder shop or thrift stores, but get things like this for a couple of P, you know, a couple of cents in the state. Very little of my kitchen stuff is, is new or is bought new because um, as you know, I do have this thing, I hate new stuff. I refuse to recycle the trash coming out the house. That I flatly refuse to do. Um, but I do believe in recycling equipment and household things and furniture and everything. Don't overcrowd <coughs> your tray. And it's not like the scones we did last week. You can keep going. This is why you don't over flour the board. Because you keep going and going and going until you've used all the dough up. Minnie wants, Minnie wants to know, <clears throat> do you make Christmas cookies? Yes, I do, darling. <coughs> Christmas cookies. And at Christmas, I use these two recipes. Um, <coughs> <coughs> pardon me. I use these two recipes for Christmas cookies. And then this one, I usually flavour with cinnamon um, or a rum flavouring, if you like that sort of thing. Um, and then basically you do the same. And when you see how we finish them later, I'll explain to you how we do the topping at Christmas. So for purposes of today, I'm only doing one tray of those because there is a limit on the time that we're going to do. Just pop that one to one side, bring another tray in, and then we're going to go with the coconut ones. These coconut ones are just divine. This recipe I have had 
for 50 years. This was uh, Mummy's next door neighbour. Um, she was called Eunice. And she used to make homemade cookies. And I thought she was saying old maid cookies. So I used to say to Mummy, I used to say, I want old maid cookies. Um, and there was no such a thing. It was homemade cookies. So um, when we left to live overseas, Mummy got the recipe from Eunice. And then Mummy gave it to me. And that's how long I've had it. And it's just, it, it's also foolproof. <coughs> Any nut can do it, let's face it. So, Charles. Hi, Charles. Wants to know. Um, can you make a Christmas baking special how to make mince, pe mince meat and mince pies? Yeah, we will do. When we get to uh, mince meat, I usually make, well, because I do make my own mince meat, um, we'll do the mince meat in November because it needs about a month um, to sort of mature. So we'll definitely make mince meat for you. Um, I don't buy jarred mince meat anymore. Again, because last week I told you when we lived in Spain, when we first moved there, you couldn't get imported products. There was no Iceland like there is now and things like that. Um, and obviously I wanted to make mince pies. So the only way to do it was to make my own mince meat. So I learned how to do that. Um, and I'll do it stage by stage with you again. Um, we'll do um, a Christmas, a pre-Christmas thing for the stuff that has to be made pre to Christmas, if you know what I mean. So we'll do mincemeat, um, and then we'll also do, when I actually start to do the Christmas cake, which will be the end of October, I'll do the Christmas cake as a programme with you. But we can't obviously do the Christmas cake in real time, because the Christmas cake takes, you know, a whole night to bake. So, use up the dough, bring it together, use it again. And don't, as I said, do not crowd your cookie sheet. These are actually a little bit small. I've got bigger ones, but it's hard for me when I'm filming to get the big ones all in as well, if you pardon the pun. Um, don't overcrowd them. Try not to have them touching, because if they're touching, they will spread slightly. Not a lot. It's not like chocolate chip cookies, which you've got to have a huge space in between. These you don't. But you don't want them to actually touch. So they're going to go into the oven. They go in there now for around 10 to 15 minutes. Okay? Uh, question for you, Gary Carrington. Yeah? How long in advance can you make the pastry? The dough. The cookie dough, do you mean, Gary? Right, you can make the cookie dough. This is what I was just going to tell you. Jump the gun there, Gadda. Um, you can make the cookie dough weeks in advance and freeze it, right? The amount you see I've got here and what we've just made earlier there, I will actually freeze. Um, I don't leave it all out. Um, and then you can bake fresh cookies whenever you want. And when you're going to freeze it, instead of making it into the, the, the disc, make a log and wrap it in the surround wrap, lighten the freezer till it's hard, and then you can actually slice through it when it's frozen, take a piece off, bring it to room temperature-ish, not till it's warm, and then roll out, bake away, and you're off. Um, in the fridge, as a dough in the fridge, I would say it will last a week, because once you put the moisture into um, your flour, it makes the gluten start to produce, <clears throat> and then it will become quite tough. So, that was very badly thought out that I put that over the sink. No. Um, so yeah, you can keep it in the freezer. It freezes beautifully. Um, especially at Christmas, obviously when I do the Christmas cookies, um, it's the same recipes, but then I actually use Christmas um, cookie cutters. I've got different shapes, Christmas trees and things. So then I do keep the dough in the, in the fridge. I sort of make it up uh, the very first week of December, last week of November. I freeze it in huge batches so that on um, really every couple of days, because in this house, I don't eat them and everybody else says um, they're not eating them. <clears throat> but for some reason, the cookie jar goes in two, three days. What are you hurrying me up for, love? 
just... Uh, well, we can't really, I've got to talk. Right, these are a set, it's like Blue Peter. These, <laughs> these are the ones I've cooked earlier. This is the colour you're looking for. It's, yeah, it's like a goldeny brown, but not, don't over brown them. And as you see, they come out a little bit irregular in different shades. Let them cool. When they come out of the oven, you'll see when these come out, because obviously we will have to take these out because we'll still be in the air. When you take them out of the oven, let them cool on the cookie sheet for about five minutes. If you try to remove them off the cookie sheet straight away, they'll, they'll fall to pieces. You've got to let them on the cookie sheet about five, six minutes. Just check the oven. Yeah, they're not that long off. I would say hmm, 10 minutes is a bit of a push. It can be, my oven tends to cook a lot quicker than other ovens. We're going to finish these with two different things. This is just to save peanut and make life a lot easier. So, you want some foil and just slide the countertop. It's You'll see why, you'll see why in a moment. Right, we're going to go through to the pantry because if you did watch the house tour video, I don't have things like microwaves. I see, when I do this normally, mixers and things, it's all done in the pantry. I don't work in it, this is just all for show. Um, so we need to go through to the pantry. So, in two bowls, I've got white chocolate and I've got milk chocolate. If you want dark chocolate, great for you. If you want uh, orange chocolate, great for you. This is cheap, everyday chocolate from Aldi. Don't buy chocolate chips. When we do chocolate chip cookies, don't buy them. Waste them on it. In the UK, they come in little tiny packets, not huge sacks like I get in the States. So you buy cheap chocolate, not cooking chocolate, by the way. Cooking chocolate is horrible. It's got no taste to it. It just tastes revolting. Um, and just break it up into little pieces and we're going to melt this. We'll start with the white chocolate because this is for the coconut cookie. When you're going to microwave it, don't walk away. Don't put it on for more than a minute. And during the minute, um, I've got a bigger microwave than this that I can't open and shut as I'm using it. You've got to keep stopping it. So this one we've got in here because I can open it and close it all the time. It doesn't take long. If you want to do it over a pan of boiling water with a bowl, knock yourself out. I'm not doing that because it's just, you know, more equipment and more of a mess. And as you can see, this is starting to melt. So just move it around a little bit and then back in. And we're going to have to do this in two stages because if you melt, don't melt both your chocolates at the same time because one of them will start to set while you're doing the other one and it's not liquefied enough and it becomes a mess. Do it as I'm showing you. Don't try and cut a corner <clears throat> because if, it, if there's any corner to cut, I've already cut it for you. So I don't believe in, in these people that are in kitchens for, you know, yeah, I spend a whole day in the kitchen cooking sometimes, but I can do everything. In, you know, an hour, I can have a main course, a, a dessert, um, I can have, you know, something for the cookie jar, cake made, there we go. Right, so that comes out now. You're going to walk backwards. This should be fun. Yeah. So these are our coconut ones, which we are going to coat with white chocolate. When it's Christmas, I use white chocolate to top all the cookies. And what I do is I dye it to different colours, and I also flavour it. So if it's red... I can dye the white chocolate will become red, it resets when you put it onto the cookie and also then it's got a flavour if you stick something like strawberry or cranberry essence in. And the easiest way I find to do these, this is why we have the worktop lined. When you're doing the chocolate as well, do small batches. Don't try to do huge amounts of chocolate that um, you end up in a right mess. It starts to set. You don't get it to melt as, as quick. It's, you know, I mean, this, this was one bar 
um, and you know a normal, um, I don't know what the ounceage is on a bar, um, one bar, and that's done six cookies. So again, people, have, I know I'm going to get messages, people say, well that's going to be more expensive than buying the shop bought. No it's not, because those bars of chocolate are 16 pence. That's why. So you would melt more for those. Let me just check the oven before we do the next batch. They're okay. Right, now we're going to melt dark chocolate. Well, milk chocolate. I did say dark chocolate. So is everybody following this so far? Uh, James McDonald from Spain. How did you learn to cook so well? Um, how did I learn to cook so well? I didn't, I learned myself, James, because we were saying earlier when I lived in Spain, it was very, very different when I moved to Benidorm than when you lived there. Um, we had no imported food stores. Carrefour had only just opened. Um, so David wanted English things or British things or even American um, food. And the easiest way to do it was I learned myself to bake. I, you know, I sat with Adelia Smith book and I followed it. We didn't have internet properly then, neither like now. Um, so I learned myself to do it. Um, and I learned by mistakes. Something went wrong, it went wrong. And it, I learned little tricks where I've side cut it and then I rewrote the recipes so that they work a lot better. Because a lot of recipes that are in books, I find don't work. They just really don't work. So that's this, you see, you want this stage where it's still in little lump. Back in for a couple of seconds. If you overdo the chocolate, this is why you only do it for a few seconds at a time, it will go hard. Don't add butter to it. Like a lot of recipes say, oh, a knob of buttering. No, your chocolate won't reset when you put it onto the cookies. It just won't work. Phil said afternoon, Queenie. Which Phil am who, I on? Who do you think? Which one? The copper? Yeah. yeah. Gary Carrington. Manchester's finest. What is the most difficult dish you've had to cook? And hold on, sorry. What is the most difficult dish to cook? And the one you dislike cooking the most? Oh, that's really. I don't like making simple things. That would be the easiest way to say what I dislike. I hate. Um, I, I couldn't honestly bring myself to put. I don't know, store-bought pies and things on a plate with, you know, frozen chips or fries or whatever you want to call them. I, I couldn't bring myself to it. That would be a dread. Um, the most difficult thing I ever did was my um, famous coconut cake when I first did it because the frosting is a sugar syrup where you make a meringue and then you have to start pouring boiling sugar syrup that you've made. Um, and it's like 12 egg whites to make the amount that you need um, so it's not a cheap do that was the first thing i did that went wrong that was an absolute nightmare um, i think i actually did that about i need to just check the oven um, i think i actually made that cake about seven times before i got it right so it was dozens and dozens and dozens like now touch wood they, these are nearly done I need a few because it's slightly going, the edge is slightly going golden to the edge. These were too close together, so I'm glad I've done that. Well, I'm not really, but I'm proving a point how they actually do spread and hit. So don't, don't do as I've done. I told you not to overcrowd the, the cookie sheets, and we did. All right, so that's your chocolate off, and that's your cookies finished. Those, when you've, when you've obviously finished all you want to do, into the fridge on the wire racks. The whole point of this is because any drips you've got has fell through. Don't try to take them off now and put them on a plate because you'll end up in a right mess. There'll be, there'll be chocolate everywhere. Put them in the fridge, set them. They take about 10 minutes at the outside for it to completely set. And you've got chocolate cookies, which are, you know, but when we've got the grandkids here, they like to eat them like that with it running and all over the face and then all over nanny's furniture i'll take some to work lovely. yeah you can take some to work because we seem to have an abundance of cookie dough today don't we so that's cookies we sort of um just wait for those to come out the oven that took a lot shorter than i thought 
Mm. We could mm. have actually got another. Charlie from Spain said, "I'm sure if you put these into, I'm sure if you put these cookies into a nice gift bag, they would make a lovely personalised Christmas." Yes, yeah, well, we do do that. Um, I'll show you that. We'll do a program on gift bags and things. Um, buy them online. I buy little silk. Uh, they're actually meant for greetings cards because they're cheaper than the ones that are sack shaped and you just fold the bottom and you see and put a little bit of tape. And I do do that at Christmas. I do um, bags of cookies for neighbours um, and jam and things like that. So we do that. Any other questions? Not as yet, no. No other questions yet. We just wait for the oven. I think I shall have a coffee because then we'll go and sit in the drawing room in a moment and then you can ask me whatever you want to ask me. So if, uh, I'll just do another little reminder on that by the way. Please go to my Facebook page and click the link for my YouTube page. And then when you go on the YouTube page, please click subscribe. So at the moment, there's only the ones coming off here. Very shortly, there will be special videos that are only made for YouTube. And they will go straight onto there. We, obviously, we can't do every single thing as a live feed. There's questions popping up, so if you want to go and yeah, you grab a coffee or whatever. To, I need to wait for the oven, but you can right. start asking questions now. Right. Knock yourself out, kids. Gary Carrington. Yeah? Just popping out to local shop. What flour is used to bake cookies and can one use the wrong type? Yes. Those cookies, if you watch the rerun, um, one of them is self-raising flour, one is plain flour, so buy both. You should always have both in any way if you're going to bake. They do totally different things and don't, for cookies, use baking powder in plain flour. That's a no-no. You'll get a really sort of bittery, a bittery aftertaste. The copper. Yeah. The copper said. These are ready, by the way, if you just want to be full of the copper. I'll just take these out to cool. And I'm just going to recap on that. Do not, do not take them off the cookie sheet now. They're boiling hot. And if you start to take one off, I'll show you. So you know what I'm talking about. You try to remove one while they're actually you need a, a fish slice if you try to remove one come off it see it bends and that will break okay so you leave them on the cookie sheet till it cools down once it's cooled down then you take them off the cookie sheet onto a cooling rack leave do not try to put the chocolate on if they are slightly warm and don't try to cool them in the fridge without the chocolate because you'll get a condensation appearing which makes them go very moist and wet and hideous. So you don't want that. So go on, so, some questions while I so get So the, cop the copper said, coffee. have you got a perfect rice recipe and how do you prevent it from sticking together? As in boiled rice? It must mean that, yeah. you know what well, it's like. I don't, I don't boil rice, I use an electric steamer. Um, I'm a big one for gadgets. So. Um, not stupid gadgets, so, but nice gadgets. The steamer, it won't stick together in the steamer. No, in the steamer, you, you, you get any electric steamers, you get like a little plastic trivet tray, rice in the bottom, just cover it with water so it's just barely touching the top and on for 60 minutes and it comes out perfect and fluffy. Break up with two forks, bingo. Maybe ready. that's what we should buy in for Christmas then, a steamer. Maybe we should. Maybe. I had actually seen something that I was going to get them for Christmas. Sarah, you know. Sarah Bio? Yeah. Nana, she said, you must be parched. For what, though? I, I can't... Coffee, say, obviously. It's coffee time, I know, but I can't start drinking uh, vodka during the day this time. So we'll go through and we'll have a coffee and answer any questions. Why don't you sit down, darling? Oh, thanks. Uh, but I don't mind. I know I don't usually allow people to sit in the drawing room in daytime hours, but there you go. We'll close that door because I've got a right sort of glare in the corner of my eye. Right, Saffron wants to know, will you be doing a list of store cupboard essentials? Yeah, I will do if you want me to do. Um, That's I, a good question, actually. That it one. is a good question. Um, store cupboard essentials, in my opinion, are always both sorts of flour, a brown sugar, rubbish on these um, things where it says use mascavado sugar and all this. It's so expensive. Just use brown sugar. I always have brown sugar, white sugar, self-raising flour, plain flour, baking powder, baking soda, um, cream of tartar. They're my real essentials, ground nuts, stuff like that. Um, we can we could do, if we can sort of have a look, I'll show you. I'll do that. I'll do a little, when the kitchen's finished, I'll do a very short video of what is in the cupboards. Phil's got a steamer, by the way, he's replied. Oh, I see. Dean McGrath. 
This should be a good He said, <laughs> I'm vegan, what should I do? You're vegan? Well, Commit suicide. Well, there's no meat in that, love, so... <laughs> What is it you? What is it you? You're aiming at there. You know, there's not not you can't use that chocolate if you're vegan. You see, he wants me to try and trip up. Yes, chocolate has rennet in it, so you just buy vegan chocolate and you just buy vegan butter, don't you? And that's it. You're away. Oh, and by the way, I meant to say to you, when you're doing cookies, don't use margarine. Do not ever use margarine. Yeah, and don't use the the butter that they make now that's spreadable because that's been mixed with a rapeseed oil and it is still not good for you. Use real butter for everything. Don't use, and these low fat margarines are the worst thing you can ever eat. You're eating plastic. Giovanni's watching and he's got a question for you. Love, love, love cookies, cookie baking. Is there any dessert you love to bake? He said, and his favorite are brownies, lemon shortcake, <laughs> shortbread bras, key lime pie. Yeah, key lime pie is one of my favourites, Gio, as you well know, because <laughs> I ended up putting about £20 on when I was with you in Fort Lauderdale. Um, key lime pie is one of my favourites. I love, 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 love to make cannolis. I adore to make cannolis. They never taste like your mum's cannolis, though, Gio, ever, but I like them. But I do like to make cannolis. I love them. And I couldn't get the moulds in the UK for cannolis, so David cut me a broom stale down to make the mould. So, if, if, and now I'm going to get people asking me what cannolis are because you don't get them in the UK. Um, it's a deep fried pasta cannoli which is filled with a cream and it's just, they're uh, just mm, it's beautiful but not good for the ass. Dean said he can't eat dairy or wheat. You can't eat dairy or wheat. Well, really, then there's no point. No it? hope. There's no hope. There's just no hope, my darling. You know, if you can't eat dairy or wheat, that's it. You're snookered. Miss DQ. Yeah. Oh, no, my darling. That's she my said little she little loves friend. you. Could you bake me some treats for the pantomime? Yes, I will. What panto are you doing, Dee? Where are you as well? We'll give you a little plug. I'm in Preston this year. Somebody's going to also notice I've not put sweeteners in. I'm trying to wean myself off sweeteners. I've not had sugar in, in coffee for 25 years, but I'm trying to wean myself off sweeteners now. Because um, even though I do use a natural base one, they're really not good for you. Um, so I want to have... He's doing Snow White at the White. London Palladium. Oh, you're at the Palladium. Good girl. I am thrilled for you. Good girl. Fabulous cast as well. I'm so pleased the Palladium are doing pantomimes again. Really, really am. That was what was missing in the West End. It really was. Anybody else? Have we got anything else coming up? Not as yet. Not as yet? I'll have a little vape while I'm waiting. Very slow this week. Last week the questions were going boom, 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 boom. And you've had enough notice. So I know there's going to be, I'll end up tonight with this being on a rerun and then getting hundreds of questions coming through later on. And if, if I don't reply to your question that comes through afterwards, it's quite difficult when it's been on a live video because there's either, you have to click a thing that says in real time or in recent and all this rubbish. And I did miss a few questions that people had asked me last week when we did the scones. Um, and to correct somebody that said to me last week, it's scone as in throne. No, it's not. It's scones, not scones. So, you know, suit yourself if you don't like it. My way or the highway. Well, anybody else yet, David? No, nothing. Mini Diamond wants to know, do you cook Chinese food? No. In a word, me, no. Too messy, too complicated. <laughs> To, uh, I'm, I'm a very, very um, country farmhouse cook and baker. Um, if you see things that I post uh, on, on, because I tend to post virtually everything that I make, not every single thing that I make, um, that's, I, I sort of have a go-to menu. I don't do Chinese food. Now and again, I do a curry, so that's Indian food, which I don't do a lot because I can't stand the smell in the house. Um, so I'm a bit funny about that. Um, most of the food I cook is, is a, a lot of Italian, not pasta, but a lot of Italian food. Uh, and a lot of American um, favourites as well. We tend to eat a lot of American from the South. Um, we tend to eat a lot of South American food. Not South American, as in the South. I meant the Deep South. Y'all. If you understand what I mean. Yeah, what was that that you were laughing at, David? Somebody's asked something. Dean. Ridiculous. What's he asked now? 
Would you recommend Betty Crocker cake mixes? <laughs> yes, I would recommend Betty Crocker cake mixes, actually. I would highly recommend Betty Crocker cake mixes. And if anybody from Betty Crocker is watching, please tell me why Betty Crocker cake mixes in the UK are a smaller amount in the packaging, they are four times the price, and the range is quarter of the amount you can buy in the States. Um, if you're going to buy Betty Crocker cake mixes, buy them online and get them as an imported product. And we will do a tutorial on cheating with a cake mix. I am a huge fan of cake mixes. I don't use them all the time. People don't think it's real baking. The only thing with a cake mix that you, you're not doing, you're still adding your, your oil, your, <coughs> your, um, your eggs, your dairy, all this is being added yourself. All they've done is weighed out the flour and put the flavourings into it for you. That is basically all you're buying. There is nothing else in that. To, to generate that cake mix. It's just got the baking powder in there, the flour in You're still having to do everything else yourself. And I also do what I call a cheat add to, where if it says, especially on a Betty Crocker cake mix, it will say a cup of oil. Don't put the cup of oil in, use a cup of mayonnaise. And you won't believe the difference because you're adding extra egg yolks and you're adding uh, the, the, the oil at the same time. And preferably do a homemade mayonnaise. Don't buy that rubbish that's in the stores. It's awful it's just vile no matter what brand it is mayonnaise is so easy to make and stays in the fridge for weeks and weeks and weeks so there you go looking lush it's... anita you can guess who that's from oh hello my kyla are you back in the uk are you still on board i don't know whether you're in the air somewhere delayed for nine hours i know you were delayed for you were delayed and had to shop that's kyle uh, that's responsible for all my haircuts and everything um I have Heather that, that, that sort of combs me out midweek because Kyle's flying all over the country. But you can see Kyle on television. He's on QVC selling uh, Raquel Welsh wigs. James Smith, mm -hmm. have you ever tried deep fried Mars bars that we have in Scotland? I have when I was in Scotland, James, and I actually think they are gorgeous, especially when you've come out of a club at four o'clock in the morning and you're really, really drunk. I do love them. I absolutely adore them. So, yeah, I've never tried making one. But... Mini Diamond. When will you do fried chicken? Uh, we'll do a savoury. Um, I'll see what the schedule is like for next week. Um, and I might do a savoury next week. Uh, we, could fry, we could try to do fried chicken and the whole uh, meal that goes with it. Obviously, if we do fried chicken, I'm not going to be able to make the, the amount. We would have to make a small amount just to actually physically show you how to do it. Uh, but it's so, so easy. It, it's unbelievable. Uh, but the recipe for fried chicken is on my Facebook page. If you go to my albums and click Nana's recipe box, the recipe for fried chicken is in there. But I will do it. I'll do it live with you. Kyle's back home. Glad you're back home safely. Oh, glad you're back, darling, yeah. <laughs> Dean, Dean again. Yeah. I've got two jars of mince meat in the cupboard from 1987. Oh. Is it still okay to use them for mince pies for Christmas? Perfect. The longer you have mincemeat, the better it goes. If you make mincemeat in large batches, I was asked earlier on by somebody, um, will I make mincemeat to Charles? Um, yes, I will do. If you make it, it will last indefinitely, basically, as long as it's sealed and it's tight. If it's a jar you've opened, no, you can't use it because it will ferment and it goes horrible. But if it's sealed, it's like a jar of jam. It lasts 20, 30 years. You know, it doesn't go off. It just gets better. It will mature. Exactly the same with a Christmas cake. This year... We're going to have to bake a Christmas cake from scratch because normally I do two and I do one for this year and then one for next year. It gets sealed, put in a tin and it just gets fed every couple of months during the year with a little bit of brandy into it. And that as long as it's sealed will last years and years and years. That doesn't go off, but it must be sealed. J James said um, they're easy to do. They just make sure the oil is very hot. Yeah, I can imagine the RJs. I am not starting to do deep fried Mars bars. No way. Am I honestly? Kyle I said, um, Are you planning any treats for Halloween? Uh, yeah, we might do. We'll do a Halloween. Um, we'll do a cupcake. Um, in fact, that we can. That David, we can... it's Terry's grandmother. Oh. David Miller wants to know who was the picture behind you. Oh, the picture behind me is my grandma. And that side is my grandpa. On that side. Why do you think we look alike? Um, she was a very stylish lady. Uh, right, so that's what we'll do. For Halloween, 
um, I'll have to look in the diary of what day, Halloween day it falls on, but we'll actually make Halloween cupcakes um, and I'll show you then, I can do you, show you how to make the frosting. And then also the question that everybody's asking me with the cheat of how to cheat with a, with a cake mix. Um, because if you're not, I mean, I've been baking for years and years and years, so I can do it literally with my eyes shut. So that's what we'll do. We'll do a cheat cake mix and we'll cheat with it and I'll teach you how to do the cheat and make the orange frosting to go on the top so it'll be very halloween -y. Or if you want to do the cookies that we did today, Kyle, they make nice Halloween treats. I do those at Halloween as well to give to the kids. Um, and I've got like a, a black cat shape, cut them out into a Halloween shape and then dye the white chocolate with orange food dye, a little bit of orange flavouring in it so you've got a bright orange. It looks fabulous for Halloween. Or even black, you can buy black food colouring now, um, which are good. They're coming up little tubs, which I will talk about those when we dye them. Yeah, so have we got anything else or anybody? Not as yet, no. Not as yet. I was trying to think. I'll just remind you all again, please join my YouTube channel. Go onto my page. There is a link on my page. Click link and click subscribe. And please share the post. I want to get as many people onto the YouTube channel as we possibly can because of all the hideous things we face, but eventually it's going to change. So from YouTube, I can also film directly live to YouTube. I just need to get as many of you there as possible and then we can take it onto YouTube and then I will share from YouTube to Facebook. This is the method in my madness. So, anybody else? Anybody else popped up? How many people have we got watching at the moment? 25. We're down to 25. Oh, it's dropping off. So, I think that's about it for today. Um, if you enjoyed the cookies, please leave a comment. Um, join the YouTube page and thank you all for watching and I'll try and answer any of your other questions so from me Terry bye